We want to welcome you to Face to Face. On today's Face to Face, I have a special guest. He's a friend, not only to myself, but my whole team. Eric Gilmore is the leader of Sonship International. From the first day I met him, I saw the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. And on today's Face to Face, we're going to talk about what God is doing in his life. And moreover, that I believe there are some keys for your life that will allow you to know the Lord in an even greater measure. This is going to be incredible. I want you to welcome Eric Gilmore. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Eric, you're a dear friend to this ministry. We love you so much. I, I really wanted to bring you on face to face and just try and somehow just delve into really what is your testimony. It's not just your ministry, it's your whole life. Every time I hear you, even though you may have a title to your message, the message is still the same. Mm -hmm. And that is what the Holy Spirit has done in your life when it comes to the secret place, to dwell in His presence. You know, I'm a kind of go out there, I'm a get up and go get them. But when I hear you, there's a revelation in your life that I want in mine. And today I'm even here just to hear what God is doing in your life. Can I just read a scripture? It says in Psalms 91, very powerful scripture and maybe more relevant right now during what is going on in the world than ever before. But it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That scripture just leapt into my heart when I think of what God has done in your life. What is the secret place and what does it mean to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty? You know, f for me, I see David talking about God hiding him from the conspiracies of men. Wow. And he says, in the secret place of his presence. So I see that the secret place is inseparable from the presence of the person of the Lord. Even the shadow means that there's someone bigger than you near you. Wow. So there's a shadow cast. The divine shadow is cast upon those who draw and live near to him. And that to me is what this secret place is. It's, it's, it's a shelter, it's a shield, it's a shade. And this is what we love and enjoy. David even says, I rejoice or take joy in the shadow of the Lord. So there's a, there's a joy that is inside of this shadow. There's a safety that is inside of this shadow and it's nearness to the person of the Lord. And that to me is the secret place. You know when the Bible speaks about the shadow of the Almighty, also we, we hear different phrases like the canopy of the Lord, the, the, the kabod, the, 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 the presence. You talk about the presence of the Lord. What, does, what, does, what is the, the Bible speaking to us when it talks about the shadow of the Lord? Because it said there is no shadow of turning right. in Him. What does it mean to be in the shadow of the Almighty? Yeah. Well, to me, the, the thing, and I can only speak for myself, but for me, the thing that really sticks out when I see shadow is seen in Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Uh, he or she goes underneath the shade of the beloved. It says here, uh, so my beloved, uh, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, this is verse 3 of the second chapter, so is my beloved among the young men. In his shade I took delight and sat down and his fruit was sweet to my taste. So to me, what I see when you say things like the shadow, the canopy, being underneath him, I see the sweet fellowship. Yeah. I see communion. I see him as taste and him as shield. Uh, the heat of the sun is blocked out. So for me, I find my greatest delight personally here. And that's why it's uh, the, the major emphasis of my ministry is to bring people to this shadow, this shade, underneath him, resting. You notice that she's sitting down. She's taking rest underneath him. She's taking delight there and she's tasting of the Lord. This is the sweet taste of the Lord. So to me, I would say in a nutshell, it's communion. So yeah. that's why the psalmist goes on to say that he is my refuge uh -huh. and my fortress. That You're saying that in the presence of the Lord, that is not only rest, but there is protection. Absolutely. Your life is covered. Yes. As you're in the presence of the Lord. I, I agree. How did the Lord bring you to this place where this became your pursuit? And really, 
we're not talking about a physical location. We're yeah. talking about the pursuit that God placed in your heart to pursue after Him, yeah. His presence, His person. Mm -hmm. Well, Tozer once stated in the pursuit of God, he said, if you lift your eyes to the Lord, anywhere becomes a sanctuary. And, and I find that in my life, I started to stumble upon this, where I would need Him, I would long for Him, and just a simple turning of attention to Him I felt as if I was wrapped, R-A-P-T, taken above the things that were going on around me, even my, the oppressions of my body or even my mind, is as if I was lifted. And, and I found such a wonderful uh, satisfaction there, peace and fulfillment, and just uh, all that I ever wanted was in Him. That's what I felt like in that moment. And so I began to just become I can use the word addicted because that's what it's like, like, yeah. a, like an addiction. I yeah. long to be with you, uh, a craving to sense Him through His Word and through worship and through just setting my heart upon Him. So this is how it really happened with me, is taking time in Brownsville to just go away and, and be alone with the Lord or even in the midst of construction, uh, turning my heart towards Him, finding a porta potty somewhere to get away from people shut the door and just lift my heart unto the Lord. So this was even happening in your workplace. Yes. yes. That when you began this journey, that, that hunger, that, that desire, because I believe that that is given by the Holy Spirit. I agree. That He makes us, you know, yearn after Him yeah. in that way. That this was a journey that was happening even in your natural workplace. Yes. So it wasn't like you were in your room you know, and you're, this was happening even in every waking moment, this yearning, this sure. panting after him. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Oh, well, we have, as humans, I think we have a duality. We split things up. As, as Tozer would actually say, we divide the sacred and the secular. And so this is very sacred, my prayer time. And the secular is what I've got to do, my responsibilities. But we need to destroy that divide of sacred and secular that brings pain and struggle and frustration with the revelation of union with God. Even as you were speaking earlier, you said uh, when you laid your life down at the feet of Jesus, yeah. you said that the presence of God became more real to you than breathing, the very yeah. air that you breathe. Yeah. And, and that's the essence of it, I think. Once we realize Jesus has done everything for us and opened the new and living way, that way, I believe, is a way of being. It is being with Him, aware of Him, and having Him in power and quicken all things. So uh, to me, it's just as simple as that. Do, do you believe that this, this journey is about cultivating in yourself? Not, not that God needs any cultivating, that He must allow us to be cultivated in order to be able to know what it is to just sit there and dwell. Because I say this because there are many people that they're hungry for God, but they get in a secret place and after five minutes, they, they don't know what to do. They, sure. they, they don't even know what to pray anymore. They, they've read scripture and they don't fully understand it. I think I've had this conversation more times than I can count of people that are frustrated. How did you cultivate that place in him where you could just sit and rest and be still? Again, I say for me, I found that a lot of my struggling was counterproductive. I was trying to make something happen and it worked against what I wanted. One of my friends called me the other day and he's on this fast and he's doing all kinds of things, but he said he can't sense the presence of the Lord and he can't have any communion or sweet fellowship with God. And I said, well, now your fasting has become counterproductive because if you leave enjoyment of the Lord, you've left what God died to give to you. It doesn't matter how amazing your, quote, pursuits are, your practices are. If it's not enjoying the Lord, it's not salvation. This is not what he died to. He, like you said earlier, to restore the yeah. sweet satisfaction of fellowship one with another, the garden again. And really, I think our hearts are a garden. And as we are sensitive to the Lord, the more these things begin to bloom and blossom. I, I once wrote down in my journal, he plants kisses on my soul like seeds and the bloom and blossom of those kisses or those seeds is the fruit of the spirit of love and joy 
and peace and patience. So for me, I see that it's the sweet exchange with him, just this enjoyment of him, that that's the key. If we miss it there, we've, we've missed it. So I, I began to find that when I got alone with God, my goal was him and not even to accomplish something. Even today, Nathan, I went in this morning and I sat down and the very first thing I said was, Lord, I'm not here to pray about my interview with Nathan. I'm not here to ask you to bless it. I'm not here to try to make sure that I'm clear-minded or to make sure I'm here because there is one and one only that every eye looks at and he is high and exalted above all and he deserves all my attention and he deserves he deserves praise and worship and honor. That transcends anything that's going to happen today or anything that I could ever get from you. You are you're worthy. And I said to the Lord, I said, oh, worthy are you, Lord. You are God above all. I lift you higher in my heart. I worship you. And so I began to see that the more that I focused on him, the more I was able to experience him. And the less I focused on him and I focused on things being done or things wanted or things pursued, I missed him. And so when I came to him for something other than just him, I missed him. Would you just speak to, to somebody that may be yearning that they would have a deeper relationship with the Lord? Would you just encourage them yes. that the Holy Spirit is wanting them, He's waiting for them to lead them to the place that they long to be? Yes, I, I, I would just say to anybody watching this right now, maybe you feel condemned, maybe you feel you're struggling, maybe you have a lot of responsibilities on you and you do want a deeper relationship with God, but all these things are there. I want to call your attention to Mary, who chose to sit at the feet of Jesus, giving him attention and giving him adoration. Wow. And this right here, what she did, Jesus says, is the good part. <laughs> it cannot be taken away from her. It lasts forever. Martha's service died with her, but Mary became a message to all generations. I want to encourage you that we're not just encouraged to sit we're encouraged to sit at Jesus' feet. It's not doing nothing. It's doing the highest thing of being low before the Lord. Let worship take center stage of your life. Set aside everything that you need from Him, everything you want from Him, and just give Him His proper place as God and King and ruler of all. And you'll be wrapped in worship. And there your life will be aligned and your mind and your heart will be in divine order. <laughs> And you can, from there, walk with Him in the things that He calls you to. I encourage you in this way. Wow. Until next time, God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name.